as I'm presuming you have worked out by the title of this video, today we're going to be cleaning out Zinc's cage. And I know, I know I've yet to do a cage tour on this. I'm sorry. I know I said I'd be doing it earlier than I have done. However, I'm not 100% happy with the way it is at the minute. It's getting better, slowly, very slowly. But as many people use cage tour videos as inspiration for setting up their own cages, I don't want to put up a cage tour until this thing is as close to perfect as I can get it. At this point in time, we've had zinc for around about eight, maybe nine weeks. I'm not sure. I'm not completely keeping track. We got him in early January, so we've had him for a while now. However, this is going to be his very first full clean out. Now, of course, I do spot clean the cages, as you've seen in the vlog I just posted. I do that kind of spot cleaning every couple of days. But a full clean out, this is the first one. As with hamsters, the longer you can leave a cage in between cleans, the better, because too much cleaning out can not only be stressful for the animal, but also with males in particular, can cause them to smell more. And males do have a bad reputation for being smelly. So far, I've barely had any issues at all with zinc smelling. He only really started to smell about maybe two weeks ago and it's slowly getting a little bit stronger every day. It's not necessarily a bad smell, but certainly when I walk into the office in the morning, it does kind of hit me as a poof, mouse. But it's not intolerable. It's not something that makes me wretch or feel awful. It just, you'd smell it, you go mouse, and then you sort of carry on with your day and it just dissipates into the background. But he is definitely in need of a clean out. By the way, first things first, for those who don't know, this is my test tube cage. It is a three level cage, well, three, three levels, three cages stacked on top of each other. So he doesn't have access to any of the other levels. Those are other cages with other animals in. Um, but this is a DIY cage as all of my cages are. And if you wanna find out how I built this, you can go and check it out in the DIY cages playlist over on my channel. That thing is getting pretty full. So we're gonna start with opening up the massive door that's not gonna go past my tripod. Hmm. There's just a nice simple overview of what the cage currently looks like. Got a few hanging toys, a few ground toys. Try to make this as busy as possible because unlike hamsters, mice actually prefer to have a very busy cage with a lot going on. Hamsters on the other hand like to have a lot of stuff, but they like to have space between that stuff to move around. To start with, I'm gonna be clearing almost all of the supplies out of this cage. Certainly everything that's on the bottom, I may leave a couple of things up top that aren't getting in the way at all because, well, they don't really need to come out right now. Oh, that's a point I should mention. I don't clean the toys on the same day I clean the cage just because I want some scent to remain in the cage. This is the same with my hamsters. I clean the toys on a separate week and that way uh, the scent remains in the cage and it's less stressful for the hamster. I also no longer have a set cleaning out time for each cage. Like I don't do it every two weeks on the dot or five weeks on the dot. I found for me and for my pets, it's much better if I just wait and sort of eyeball the situation. And when the cage seems like it needs cleaning, that's when I clean it. Maybe that's a little easier for me considering how many small animals I've had. I'm not sure. Uh, but if you find it easier to, to set a specific time to clean it, then you know, do what works for you. Just Try not to clean them every single week. Whew. Those cardboard boxes stink. No odor control in cardboard. Ah. That's the vast majority of supplies out of the cage. I've left a couple of things in just because A, they're not in my way anyway, and B, they're a nightmare to get down, so I'm not even gonna try. Also, in case you're wondering where Zink is, he is, as far as I'm aware, fast asleep up in his little nest. He has really built that nest up lately. I gave him some hay in the bottom of this cage and he's carried it all the way up here and just built what kind of looks like a little bird's nest from the outside. It's very cute. So I'm just gonna leave him in there. He doesn't seem to be bothered by me cleaning, so why disturb him? The next step is once again, nice and easy. I'm just gonna be removing most of the substrate at the bottom. I will be leaving a little bit in there, and that is so I can mix it in with the new substrate to once again, just spread his familiar scent around and make sure his cage still smells like home. I'm 
I'm not going to be wiping or washing down the cage. That is something I typically reserve for either very dirty areas, which currently there don't seem to be any. The wood seems pretty clean. Or if the animal has either passed away or they have been ill. And that just helps to not spread so much bacteria around. Since Zinc is healthy, he is very much alive and there are no dirty patches on the wood. I don't feel the need to wipe it around this time. As it doesn't need wiping down, I'm going to go straight into putting in the clean substrate. And the first thing I have is my great big box of Aspen. Lovely. I won't be using all of that Aspen. I will just be putting a layer in across the bottom of the cage. I have a second substrate to go on top. And both substrates that I'm using are fantastic for odour control. And it's these combined with the ventilation of this cage and the ventilation of the room we're in that I think have contributed to zinc going so long without smelling of anything. The final substrate I'm putting in is one of my all-time favourites, wood-based cat litter. Really important to know that you can't use any old cat litter in a pet's cage, especially if it's clumping litter or crystal litter, none of that stuff. That is dangerous if your pet swallows it, but wood-based and paper-based cat litters are safe for your pet to use. And the reason I like wood-based pellets is because they have excellent odour control. These are, of course, intended to go in an animal's toilet. So the odour control with them is great. They're perfectly safe for your pet. It's a great option if you need good odour control. You can use absolutely any brand. The brand I'm using really doesn't matter. But I would recommend, like I'm doing, pairing it with another substrate, especially for burrowing animals like hamsters, because this is not good for burrowing in. The only exception would be a hamster like Iodine, who is allergic to everything. Somebody's awake. The very last thing I need to do is just to put all of his toys back in his cage. And I'm not going to really change any of them around because I changed them recently. I will be swapping out the cardboard boxes though because as mentioned earlier, they stink.
that is Zinx Cage done, finished, cleaned, looking lovely. He seems pretty happy with it, exploring everything that's going on, all the differences. Hi, buddy. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. You can also share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was informative. I hope it was enjoyable. And I will see you guys next time. I can see you. Interested.